Greetings guys, welcome to the channel. My name is DJ Odyssey. On today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this deep house track. I'll show you everything that I did, from the plugins that I used, the effects that I used, the drums, everything. I'm gonna play it to you guys how it sounds so far, and then from there we break it down very simple. Let's play this. keep it right here for now and uh, so we're just gonna break it down very simple and I hope you guys will get to learn a few things from this tutorial that we're gonna be doing today so I'm gonna put it here where there's a lot of things right uh, so we can start off with the drums uh, when it comes to the kick and the clap and the shaker loop or uh, I didn't do anything much to them it's just a straight kick you know right and the kick sounds like this. Uh, sometimes it's how you get the perfect kick and then you don't have to do too much tweaking onto it unless it sounds dope, but you wanna change a few things on it, you know? So, and then I use the clap. And the clap looks like this. That's the only thing I think I added like a wave shape a little bit because I felt like it was too harsh. So I needed to just reduce it a little bit on the harshness. So I used uh, a preset here from, from Wave Shaper, Fruity Wave Shaper actually. And then from here we move on to uh, this loop. So with this loop is, uh, you find it in my Ama Piano sample pack, uh, but because it doesn't have too much, it has a shaker and some sounds in it. So I'll play for you how it sounds. So I like it, so I decided that I'm gonna add it into like Deep House. So it sounds like this. As you can tell, that's that private school thing, but I needed to make sure that the kick hits harder and everything. So right now, so far, we have uh, a drum loop that sounds like this. So I wasn't 100% happy with the clap right so i added a rim shot just behind it it comes here like that the end i think like no it comes somewhere around here this is the rim shot and so i had to make sure that it goes with the clap same thing it sound like this so without the rim shot with the rim shot. And I didn't do anything on the rim shot, it was just the volumes that are tweaked on it. So we're still gonna get into other things. And then I had to add in some effects, especially your downshifters. So there's a downshifter which I reversed. And then this one is just the downshifter the way it is. So it's two different types of downshifters that I wanna reverse so that it can give you a riser feel. So it sounds like, the first one is like this. So it's a downshifter, and then the same downshifter can become a riser if you reverse it, then it gives you this feel. Great. And uh, now let's get into more things, more drums. I added this, it's a wood, wood packer, you know, it sounds like this. We added this. That's a dope uh, tom, sounds like that. I added like a loop, 
which is like some head loops, right? They sound like this. You can't hear them too much, right? But that's how I wanted them to be a little bit subtle into the song. I added another high hat, but an open hat. So what I did with the open hat is I reversed it and I had to put it somewhere onto the thing where it's going to end close to the clap, to the second clap on this part. So it sounds like this. Let me put it at the beginning so that you can hear. So that's the drums for now. You know? So normally you would want to take all the drums and put them in a different, like you create like a bass or you put it on this side, right? So that's where you can actually put in some compression so that everything could gel together, you know? So what you do is probably have a drum mix uh, thingy. So you say drum mix. Let's just do it a little bit. Uh, maybe give it like a color or something. So this is where the drum mix comes in. All right. So everything here doesn't, you make sure that every instrument from the drums goes into the drum mix. Everything that's a drum goes into the drum mix. And then from there you wanna maybe add in some kind of compression for the drums, just so that everything could just be one thing. So you do this. So that's every drum and it goes into this. So these are instruments. I'll just move them a little bit to the side. Mm, that's the main reason why I would have drums sitting at the on the left side. If every drum, whenever I put in a drum, I make sure that it's on the left side of the of the mixer channel so that it's much easier for me to just I know this is this is drums and I know this is a bass and then I know these are synths. So it, it's simple as that for me, you know. So hence it's much simpler to just move them into the drum mix. And so now that I have the drum mix like this, now we play it. Every drum has been put into the drum mix channel. So from here, this is where you want to put in some type of uh, compression. Maybe you might use a footillimeter. That's what I use normally so that I can see how much um, I like to be, I, li I like to see. So I use the footillimeter, then there's limit, then there's compression. So the compression, then you see the attack, release, everything, right? So since we're dealing with the drums, right? depending on how you want them to sound. If you want the compressor to hit immediately, uh, you might want to deal with your attack and then keep it there. It's fast attacking, so it, immediately when a drum hits, it compresses it. Or you do the attack just a little bit so that maybe you want your kick to be more visible most of the time. So you want to maybe move that. Then you take the threshold to where your drums are. So you might do this, depending on how much compression you need. And then normally with my drums, I go to as much as four, a ratio of four, and then you can do the knee totally so that it can really compress, you know? And then if you feel like you're doing too much compression, you can increase the gain, you know? And you can just increase it a little. You don't want to lose your, your drums, how you want them to sound, you know? So I was just showing you the compression that if you take down too much of the threshold, you're messing around with the with the drums, you know. So and also the release, you can decide on the release, you know. I can take the release lower. So it doesn't compress too much, or I can just do this. So now we have the drums compressed a little bit. 
and then they sound nice and then you can add other things that you feel like you can add maybe like your eqs and stuff but for now i just wanted to add in some kind of compression and it's also this other plugin here um by waves i forgot the name that i like to use sometimes um the cla mix down uh, so cla mix down is dope for drums as well so if you have waves plugins um try to use the cla mix down because what it does it glues uh, your drums together it can also glue your whole song together like you can put it in the master channel and you can just glue them together the way you feel like it you can just mess up with some knobs there let me take out the compression a little and i'm gonna play it here because it also has compression on it so let's play this so that you hear what i'm talking about right so there's a glue thing here if you increase it If you don't have enough treble into your drums, maybe you can increase it. If you don't have enough bass into your drums and you feel like you need to increase bass into your drums, you, you have this, you can increase it. And you can also increase the drive so that your song could just have, your drums could have that type of a drive, you know, uh, like that distortion into it. So when you play this, uh, I'll increase the drive a little. Remember, when it comes to drums, you want your drums to shine into the song. So now we have the drums sounding like that. And then now let's get into the chords, right? Um, I used Launch Lizard for the chords. Um, and I'll just play them alone so that you guys can hear how they sound. This is how they sound. sound amazing on day and then what you do is the EQ cut off the low frequencies number one make sure that you cut off the low frequencies into your song and then you add in maybe a limiter as well make sure that it reaches where the, where the notes are hitting so I'll show you the, the threshold number one as you can tell I went down because actually because of the gain you can see there's a gain a little bit, but again, when you make the threshold, you want it to be at a good level where the, the, the keys are hitting. And then I didn't do the knee, no. So I just increased the ratio. And then, then there was a compression. And I increased the gain. And then it's dope. The gain is just to make sure that whatever that you're compressing, you're just increasing it to that, you know, that's it. Because when you compress, you're reducing the volume. And so when you're gaining it, you're just getting it back to where it was. But the thing is now it has a constant feel to it, you know. That's what the compressor does. It gives you a constant, constant sound. Depending on your attack and your release, if you're looking for a constant sound, your attack and your release should sit well, you know. And if you're looking for it to just, when it hits it, it gets compressed and it comes back. I'll show you how you do this. I'll, I'll make a tutorial on the compressor very soon. And then I added Poly 6. Oh, wait. I added a chorus, not too much of it. And I also added some reverb, you know. That's what I did. And then we go to the Poly 6. And Poly 6 on top of this sounds like this. The cuts are just the copy and paste of it. And then now you're just adding an EQ again, you're cutting off the low frequencies and some highs a little, and then also the same compression, the same type of compression, the same way you're compressing. You don't just copy and paste the compression. So together they sound like this. And then I added like a nice piano here. Uh, 
I use Kiskei for this, uh, cinematic, and then this is how it looks. I could have used compression on this, but I just wanted to just continue. So I added like a nice reverb for this. If you need a compression, especially for this type of music, you could add more compression because uh, the notes are not equal. So you must make sure that your compressor, your threshold sits where the lowest, where the lowest note is basically, if you want that lowest note to also shine into the song, because it will compress these ones to be there. You can also do like scale levels where you can mess around with this, where the notes will be all the same, equal thing, you know. So you can also do that, but depending on what you want, you know, it's more like compression in a way. You're just dealing with the velocities like that. So it's up to you, but you find that it was a wave, you do it the same way that I was gonna do the compressor or that limiter compressor thing. And then now I added the saxophone here. Sounds like this. Use contact for this uh, session horns, and then I'll show you more. Still, you have a limiter and you have a chorus. This is what I used, uh, and then you have a footy delay, and you have this a reverb. These are the four things I used on this, and I'll show you how they sound. explainable as well what I did with the compressor all that is the same type of an analogy whatever that I did on the keyboard is what I did on this I just had to do it again you know and then now I went in and got this from contact a guitar and it sounds like this That's how the guitar looks. I used the guitar reveries from Contact. That uh, sounds dope, you know. Sounds dope. Uh, like I showed you, uh, I used the parametric EQ to cut off the low frequencies, and then I also did the compression, you know, because when you play something like this, your notes will not be equal, you know. So you need some type of compression to make sure that you pick up some notes in a way, you know. And then, are you cutting off the notes that are too loud? You know, I went to Keyscape, I just took cinematic again. It's just a piano and it plays like this. parametric EQ for this one and then I didn't want to do too much and then now I added like a nice plug and it sounds like this I 
this tube synth for this. Uh, it's called Kaimi Echo. And then just added some reverb onto it. I might add some compression again, but I showed you how I add compression most of the time. But if there's other ways that you want to add compression, I'll show you. I'll make a video strictly on how to use the compressor. And I think this sums up almost everything. And I added a bass line from Flex. It's just the first one inside in Seychelles bass guitars. Uh, sounds like this. compression on this bass you know because there's some notes with the bass line the problem with the bass line is that there's some notes which when you take them lower you can't really hear them as much so with some compression you can actually pick them up you know make them the same volume as the note that is high you know so that's what I did on this I'll show you how we compress this And that sums up everything that's on the song. Uh, I'm just gonna play it out for you a little bit, you know, so you guys can hear how it sounds. And hopefully, maybe this tutorial was helpful. I'll see you guys on my next video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I love you guys so much, you know. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna play it from here and. I'll see you guys on my next video. Peace.